Throughout her illustrious career, she has played pivotal roles in talent development and recruitment, consistently guiding students and professionals towards successful career paths. So ma'am, without any further ado, I request you to have the floor and please guide us. Thanks, Saidi, for a beautiful introduction uh, and uh, reading my LinkedIn profile. <laughs> so thank you. Uh, and very well, warm welcome to all of you. I know it's the end of the day uh, for most of you. But yes, trust me, I'll try and keep this more uh, informative and uh, more informational so that you we all take away something or the other from the session. Um, just to, to just add on, uh, my name is Ad Ritu. I've been part of the uh, talent acquisition HR field for more than two decades now. Currently, I'm with Brilio, um, which is into IT consulting, and I head uh, campus strategy. As part of my role, uh, I have been throughout in HR, talent acquisition, early careers, but last few years have been closely working with uh, campuses. I work um, with the placement team, the professors closely to see how we can um, be more, um, we, we can add more value to and collaborate in some of the recruiting efforts. And also uh, as part of that uh, personal interest, um, my doctoral topic is also on the same. What are some of the ways uh, academy and um, corporates industry can collaborate uh, how we can make this journey more meaningful so that the transition that we uh, talk about from campus to corporate is seamless. Uh, while I wouldn't say that it will, there will not be challenges and huddles, it's everywhere. It's not just the transition from a campus to corporate, but any at any point in time, there are huddles and challenges, but yeah, how we can make this more smooth and um, seamless to each one of you. With that, let me start, be, uh, begin with um, this whole, uh, the conversation that uh, that I'd like to have with all of you today. Uh, it'll be more meaningful if you can pour in your questions. Uh, I'd like to structure my content relevant to what's running on your mind. I know we all step into academy, we have big dreams, we look at learning, taking something or the other. And the next milestone is how I can use these learnings that I have during a few years of our college, depending on how many years we spend for the for the degree that we take, uh, make it more meaningful to picking up something. Some of them will go into higher studies or you would pick up a job or would want to start on your own or different dreams. Everybody individuals have different dreams. But uh, today, I'd like to uh, see how I can uh, pick one part of it and uh, share my experiences and learning and um, uh, and then take the questions that you have. So um, the topic for today is branding, <laughs> personal branding. You can talk, call it career branding. Uh, well, I can go for hours on it. And I would say that I've taken 20 years at least till now to figure this out. And every time it changes, uh, what was branding when I passed out of college is different versus what is branding right now. Uh, but I will certainly talk about what it is in the current era and why it is important and how it makes a difference. But before that, uh, what is what are some of the questions that are running in your mind? And I'll try to see if I can answer most of them. You can unmute and ask. You can use the chat option to type your questions um, and then we'll take it from there. What is that you want to hear from me in this in the next one hour that we're going to be together? Yes, all the participants are allowed to raise your hands and we will unmute you and you can ask your questions directly to now. I see Srinish. Uh, how can I start as the first tier? Okay. Yes, Rishikesh, go ahead. I'll take all the questions and I'm sure by end of the day, uh, end of the session, you'll have the answers. Yes, Rishikesh, go ahead. Hello, ma'am. Hi, good evening. Hi, good evening and good evening all of you. Uh, ma'am, I want to ask that how we can differentiate ourselves in our college in terms of skills uh, and communications 
and which things we can make ready in terms of industry related that things uh, this is i want to ask you man. basically how i can uh, make my college uh, life more effective in terms of learning communication skills and how i can pay, make myself ready for industry and what's the differentiated factor that i can right that yes. that is your question yes. great yes ma'am Avinash, how can I develop my profile for MBA along with uh, along with our graduation course? So I'll come to that as well. I I, I do have a short story to say, share that um, how life goals keep changing when it with respect to learning and with respect to um, picking up a job as well. So I'll answer that question. Avinash made a note of it. Yes, Devesh Deveshu Pathak. I see your hand raised. Yes, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, I can hear you. Ma'am, first of all, thank you for taking the session. My query is that when we apply for the placements during campus season, placement season on campus, we see that we might we fit only eighty percent of the criteria for a certain company. We lack something from a company A. We lack something from company B. How do we counter and prepare for that during the interview? Because if they ask for the interview that you do not have possess these skills, but you have been shortlisted based on your projects and experience, how do you, I mean, how do you counter a response to that thing? Beautiful question. Yes, I do touch upon this as well that I am at college and I'm only 80% ready or maybe sometimes you will see 50% match, right? Uh, even if it can be 100 or even it can be zero, but your profile has been shortlisted. And how do I uh, counter the questions during the interview and make myself fit? Yes, I will address that as well. Uh, Adya, go ahead. Adya, I see your hand raised. While Adya is... Uh, you just need to unmute and talk. But I do see Rama has put a question that we have heard within hours of your job posting, there are hundreds of applicants for it. So how to increase our chance of getting selected for the job? Selected, uh, especially data science and ML engineer roles. Are there you cannot unmute? That's fine. Then you can type your question. Uh, good evening. Adhya, you have unmuted now? yourself now. You can speak now. Yeah, so am I audible to all? Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, you are muted again, Adya. Uh, you could type your question in the chat. No no worries. Uh, sorry, sorry for the inconvenience, ma'am. Uh, no problem. Warm greetings from my end. Uh, ma'am, my question was, uh, as a fresher, should I juggle more for internships or should I prepare myself for, you know, for the... Uh, uh, jobs uh, according to the job description that's given on LinkedIn. So uh, that's my question. Great. Again, another good question that what do I do? How do I balance? Do I focus on academics or do I focus on building experiences because industry asks that or the JD on LinkedIn says the experiences? Beautiful question. Thanks for putting that, Adia. I will cover that as well. I'm just making the list of questions so that I don't miss out on important things, uh, important um, information and things that I can share. Yes, Kiha, I can see your hand raised. Ma'am, I want to ask that question that I'm doing online degree and uh, internship as well. But uh, I want to know that is it good to have an online, online degree or is it better to have offline experiences again great question relevant to the current situation we are all in uh, uh, yes while some of it is completely gone offline but some of us are still working in the hybrid mode or it's still online um, I'll cover that bit as well Kiha thank you for posting that question so uh, with this list of questions can we get started and then we'll take the rest of the session uh, questions toward the end of the session um, so yeah, let me um, now, I will touch upon the topic, but let me finish first answering these questions. Uh, so first bit, what do I do in college? Well, I may not go question by question. 
how to use LinkedIn to get internship. Yes, Harshit, we'll talk about it. It's not only LinkedIn, any job site uh, which is available, you can talk about uh, internships. You can look at internships. Kirti, how to mention the career gap that we took for upskilling on resume. Okay. So, okay, let me jump straight into college, corporate. How do I work on this? Okay. So a couple of things. When you're in college, you're studying, right? You, you've joined there to acquire knowledge, to acquire skill set. And this is the time when you have only academics as focus. Well, I know there are gap, there are periods, where there are time gaps where you can go for internship, acquire an internship, which is more a little bit of practical knowledge and come back. My uh, experience and what I want to share today is uh, the the myth that we have versus the reality. Okay, so when you're in college, you're required to only focus on acquiring theoretical, conceptual, basic knowledge and making it strong. Now, dreams can change. After college, what I want to do can change for different people, right? Some of you want to start on your own, then you start shaping your career accordingly. Some of you want to grab a, uh, a job, then you start working towards it. And some of you want to go for further studies. So you then start preparing yourself like that. So in a nutshell, one size does, will not fit all or one solution will not fit all. But what is the key? What is important? When I'm in college, I am. I, I took up a course and that course may be relevant for now, may not be relevant for future skills, right? Um, let me let me share a quick short story. I'm going to bore you with this, but yes, I want to share this. And, and the reason I'm sure there'll be some messages you'll take from this. Um, I was a science grad, okay, and couldn't crack, crack engineering, so I decided, okay, engineering is not my cup of tea. Let me let me go for the second alternative, which was I was preparing for uh, taking up another course. Uh, in the computer science field, because at that point in those days, only two fields were recognized. Either you're an engineer or a doctor or something related to computers because that was in boom. But yes, I went ahead and gave uh, an entrance for MBA as well. And when I gave the entrance, I saw my scores being very high uh, and I was getting a non-payment seat in MBA versus MCA. Uh, the test, the entrance itself, uh, was was a uh, witness to what my skills are or what I'm good at, right? Versus uh, what I was trying to achieve. Um, convinced my parents to let me do an MBA, went for an MBA uh, course, and then yes, took up HR, started my career. When I started my career, I did not get what I wanted, but I took because the company that I started was my dream company. I was doing everything under the HR umbrella along with um, operations, customer support and HR, but I did not get a core HR role. But I, because I loved the company I joined, and I took five, it took five years for me to settle and understand how an organization, because in my time, we did not have frequent internships. The only internship I had was for two months and that was in a, in a, in, in a different talk. And I, honestly, I did not do much in during the internship. All I was doing was entry of um, tracking uh, records of people's attendance and exit, and making those records. It was on manual. We did. We were. We were not in the digital world at that time. So internship experience zero. Only experience which is during MBA. A lot of theoretical knowledge. Figured out. Joined a company and then started to learn. What I understood was what I learned for two years is not applicable and I had to unlearn and learn the way of doing work. Everything from how HR systems work, how operations work, how process work and things like that. Uh, my journey started and every, every milestone that I have seen, it's an immense uh, amount of learning that I have because things kept changing. The whole digital transformation, the whole new ways of doing things, technology intervention, even in HR, not only in the tech field, but even in HR, made me to upskill myself, and I'm still doing that. <laughs> so to answer your question, that if you can uh, learn 
make yourself 100% ready in college? Answer is no. As long as you can fix and learn some of the basics. And from basics, I mean, what kind of role or what kind of job or what you want to do in future, have your basics ready. If you are applying for an IT role, for any technology IT company, then as long as your basics are strong, you're very good with maths, data structures, uh, algorithms, uh, coding, if you're applying for core product, uh, core coding development roles, as long as these basics are strong, that's absolutely fine. No company wants you to look at, you know, advanced technology. If you're applying for a data scientist role, as long as you know um, how data works, how to read data, how to analyze the data using any tool, they don't expect you to be uh, proficient with all the data and uh, tools available in the market because every company uses a different tool. And when you join as freshers, they will train you. What they look at is, are you good with your basics? Do you understand some of the basics? And do you have coding skills? And you can use any language. Even for data scientist role, they look at people who have coding, uh, understand coding as well, because some of the solution may require you to come up with some tech intervention and that may require coding skills. They don't expect a particular language, any language is fine. So if you look at any company, when they come for an interview, they as a process, they have an online assessment during the online assessment, they'll give you a core coding problem. If it is analytics, they'll give you an analytics case, how you can solve it, how you can read. And they will look at other things like aptitude, logical reasoning, problem solving, and other things, right? So if you've cracked that online assessment, that itself is a, is a sign that yes, you are 50% matched to, the, to that job for the company and then is your interview. And during the interview, no company will ask you uh, any high advanced questions. If you look at very, very, very basic questions, what, what's your profile, what you've done, what you bring to the table, and why do you think you're a match? Standard questions, and then they may start, if it's a core technical round, they'll start posing questions, they'll give you a problem statement, and they'll see how you understand that problem, how are you able to decode it step-by-step, step, and coming and the and you're coming up with a solution. Let me uh, share this secret. They're not looking at right answers at that stage. They're looking at, are you able to understand the problem, comprehend it, break it into smaller steps, are able to, the approach you're taking to coming up with a solution. They only look at the approach and the solutioning mindset. They're not looking at the right answer. You, uh, And they're looking at something like an offbeat answer, innovative solutions. That's what they're looking at. So trust me, um, if you're good with your concepts, if you understand basics well, if you understand what you're learning, how is it applied in the real world, you have it all in you. You don't have to worry about any interview, cracking any interview. All you have to be confident about, this is what I've learned, these are my skills, and this is how it can be applied. Now to the question that, I'm not a fit, I only know 80% and 20% I don't have. And that is asked in the question during the interview. So what you, how you do that? Not necessary in any interview, you'll have answers for all the hundred, all the questions posed. Even I have attended interviews. I, I don't know how many I may have attended till now, but not every time you have the answer, but for the things that you've not done, you always say, what you have done and how you can learn that. You bring it back to your learning ability. You bring it back to the strengths that you have. You bring it back to how you can take that as a challenge and, and overcome it. So if you end up in a situation where you don't have answers for 20%, it's absolutely okay. You be honest in saying, I don't know this. I've not learned this, but I think, but this is the base for it. And I, 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 I can learn given an opportunity, I can learn. And, and you can quote with an example how you have taken challenges during your academic uh, life and take, learned new skills, new technologies, new concepts. And you can continuously emphasize on your learning ability. And that is what they look at. They only look at, are you somebody who can learn, how is, can be 
um, is open to learning or not. The minute you say no, the minute they see that you cannot, that's a rejection. So the straight answer, you will not, uh, you cannot be 100% ready for any job while you're in college. Even after experience, you acquire certain experience, you only get certain skills. You only acquire certain skills and life is too long. I mean, your work life is going to be to X number of years, right? And, you, and especially for people who are going to be in the tech field, you have to keep upskilling. We all know how tech transformation is happening, how technologies are changing and how new versions are coming. So you have to keep upskilling yourself. So when you see a JD, only look at uh, what exactly is the requirement and how you have how you can match to it, right? How you fit into that. If there are like, okay, now there could be some companies who are very, very specific about the skills. And if you don't have it, then it's absolutely okay. Either you learn and you, uh, you attend the interview or you don't have it, so you don't attend the interview. That's absolutely okay. But because there'll be very, very few companies who will be very specific to for, for a, a particular skill or a particular experience during the interview. And they are looking for that. So that's absolutely okay. If you don't have it, then you're not a fit. You can try for experience and you can still say that you at least have the basic of it and you're absolutely okay to learn. And if they are okay, they will hire. If they're not okay, that's absolutely fine. You should take that as they had a different requirement and you're not a fit. So the, this is the... Um, Core. So uh, Deepak had this question, does MBA job needs upskilling frequently? Uh, my dear uh, friends here, uh, future colleagues, yes, any job will require you to upskill because the way of doing things, new new versions of, uh, of tech coming in, new concepts coming in, uh, it will require not that you need to open a book and read every day. That's not the thing, but yes, depending on when a new update is coming or so I'll tell you why, what does this upskilling mean? Okay. While I'm in recruitment, okay. I have been in the recruitment industry for last 20 years, but how I do hiring for a particular company versus the other company is the same. Hiring is the same. The word, the process is the same, but the kind of profiles, the kind of colleges, where I hunted from, the tools they use, uh, the process, the uh, the interview process that they have, the selection, it's very very customized to a particular company, right? Um, and what I hire, when I'm hiring for a product development company, the requirements will be different. When I'm hiring for a services org, it will be different. When I'm hiring for a consulting org, the requirements will be different. So my date, my uh, the pool, the talent pool is different, right? So. While hiring as a process is the same, but understanding the job role, looking where to hire from, the kind of questions that we need to come up with, the candidate experience that they have changes, right? So I have to learn that as a new process for that company and apply that and then see, can I come up with new solutions? Can I change the process? Can I bring in some new ways of doing things? So that is what we call about upskilling. It may always not be that I go back to college and read, or it may not be that I'm attending a classroom training. A lot of training, learning, when you start working happens on the job. It happens self, or self-learning on the job. If new things have come, you do a lot of research, see what other companies are doing and come up with new ways of doing things. So um, to answer your question, learning is a lifelong process it will require you to keep learning um, irrespective of what jobs you are in. Okay, um, so I see ma'am, I'm interested in HR, but people are, uh, are I'm a bit scared about it since people are saying it will take be taken over. Okay, AI is not going to take any job, be it HR, finance, marketing, tech, any jobs. It won't take away jobs. It will create new jobs. Like, for example, if I tell you, um, okay, mobile is a perfect example. We are also gadget friendly, right? And now we see, had we continued to use the Nokia 
keypad, the first phone that came, if we would continue and and no and whoever invented that technology and were working in that domain would not adapt and learn new technologies, uh, would they be employable in the market? No, right? So AI is not going to replace your jobs. People who learn AI will replace you. So it's important. Uh, you need to use it. You need to use it wisely because it is artificial intelligence. Use it as reference. While in my days, we started with Google as reference, but now it's AI, We're like chat GPT has come. Uh, there are other forms of sources. Use it, but don't directly copy paste. Apply your knowledge, apply your intelligence, read it. It's just a source for reference. Like beautiful, I can share. Uh, I started doing my doctoral degree and um, I have a topic in mind. And when I go to my professor and say, okay, this is what I want to do. They say, please go back, read the papers, the journals that have been published on this topic and come back to me. Now I'm sitting and reading 100 papers, right? And coming up with what has already been done. Can I do something new? Is there a different angle I should be thinking? So I'm sitting and reading. Well, that is what you should be doing. Now, if I use an AI, what it will do, it will take a summary of these 100 papers and give me what I need to, and it will save my time. But doesn't mean I will not go in depth and read the papers if there is an element of doubt. I can't just take what the AI will give me and paste it and say, okay, here's my paper, here's the summary that I want to. There have been instances where I've deep dived into a paper. There have been instances where I've not. So that's the only enablement AI will do. But will it uh, will it take away the action from me of reading as a scholar? No, I need to still read. I need to still understand and I need to still write. So AI will not take any jobs, will not replace any people. It will just enable you to be efficient and think in different directions. Like for HR as well, uh, one beautiful question was for any job posting, there are 100 applicants. As a recruiter, if I sit and read each and every resume, it's going, one resume will take at least a quick, if I read it, if I just scan, I can do it in a, in a one or two minutes. But if I read everything and understand uh, in depth, it takes five to 10 minutes. Now and multiply that by hundred, right? So what AI does in this, if any, if a company has an AI tool with the key set, uh, with the skill set I put, Let's say if I say search resume with the skill, it will look at the 100 resumes and only give me 30, which has that skill. So I save my time, but I still have to read the 30 resumes. I can't take and give it to the hiring manager that here are the 30 resumes. So it's not taking my job. It's making me efficient enough in reading the 30 resumes and coming up with, with uh, saving my time to, that I should not read 70 resume. So that is the difference, but it, I'm still required to be in the company as a recruiter. AI can't send the resumes to the hiring manager. I'll tell you why. Now, every individual writes a resume in a different format, right? They may, they may mention certain things, which if I have given a command of search resumes with Python, Okay, now people may have written Python in the skill section somewhere else or other languages, but as a recruiter, I will still go ahead and read those resumes and send. I can't blindly send if it is not available. So to answer your question, AI will not take away our jobs. We just have to learn how to use AI, how, where to use AI and where to use our intelligence and then just adapt and upskill ourselves. Um, hello, ma'am. I have heard that in this data science and AI ML domain, MS and MTech grads are preferred more than undergrads. So how to outshine them and get a well-paying job? So while I know the skill is more in demand right now, uh, I wouldn't say that only post-graduates are preferred. There are a lot of companies who only hire graduates. Undergrad, uh, the undergrads and hiring needs are changing. So I don't think you should worry about that, that I should, well, 
it's always good to acquire the highest qualification, which is good. Do not jump into getting into jobs because when you start, um, the focus to academics changes. But if you feel that, no, I want to study till, till graduation, get some experience and then do post-graduation, perfectly fine. But if you feel, no, I want to complete post-graduation and then take a job, perfectly fine. So here I cannot say that this is right or that it, that is right. It all depends on individual. Like for me as well, I wanted to complete post-graduation and that, then get into a job. And I did that. But trust me, at that time, I also wanted to do my doctoral, uh, doctoral degree, but I couldn't. And it's now that I have started. So I'll tell you, once you get into the job, uh, getting into a professional course, which requires transitioning back to academics and then uh, spending X number of uh, years is a little tricky situation, gets difficult, but that trend has changed. If you look at, there are a lot of, uh, if you look, uh, if not tech, but you never know when you start working, your interest gets into a non-tech profile and most, some of them get into a management course. It's absolutely fine. You work for two years, three years and then get into a management course, absolutely fine. But that's an individual uh, career path. Uh, nothing is right or wrong. Uh, what you should do is understand and define what are your goals? What is that you want and what you want to chase? If you feel after this, I want to get a job, prepare yourself for a job. But if you feel, no, I want to further study and I'm absolutely okay to park some earnings for the time being and do it in future, then it's absolutely fine. We all know we we acquire, we go look for a job for two reasons. Mainly two reasons. They could be other as well. But the top two are I can start earning, be financially independent. Second, I want to acquire some um, knowledge, experience and then see what suits me or what my interests are. So it's absolutely okay. <laughs> These two, any you could pick any one of this. If you want to earn first, then get into, then start preparing yourself for a job. Take that and then start um, working and you never know, you continue working or you would want to shift. That depends on what kind of jobs you land up, what your interest is and what your uh, personal life situations are right that's one second um if you feel no i uh want to gather some experience two years in my mind then i will look at what i need to do i want to continue for uh m tech or an mba that that's also absolutely fine but that uh i'm not the right person to tell you what is right or wrong all of this works you can continue working you can continue studying working and then get back to to doing a master's degree and then get back to industry that's absolutely fine i'm doing it now if you look at after 20 years so that that's what i'm saying there's nothing right or wrong you can always get back to learning and then come back to corporate uh working but you need to define that and and uh, take those decisions so um now let me quickly um share what i have uh, yes, Adya, elab elaborate ATS friendly resume. So I'll come to that. That's what my topic is all about. So let me now quickly jump over to the slides that I have. Most of it will get addressed with that. And then I'll take the questions towards the end of the session. So I'm quickly sharing the screen. Let me know when my screen is visible to all of you. Is my screen visible? No, ma'am, it is yet to be a decision. Okay. One second, what did I do? Did I oh, share screen? Okay. Is it visible now? Yes, it is. Okay, great. All right. Um, I can skip this. We've already done the welcome part. So the important part about how do I prepare for questions, uh, for interviews, uh, but it's just not cracking interviews, but how do I create a brand for myself? And that's very long. It's not only for now, but for future as well. So why it matters, what it is, and 
some of the things. But before that, I do want to quote something. And I'm sure you must have heard this. This is a beautiful book that I've uh, read. I see uh, Sundaresh laughing. Did you read this book? Uh, or you happen to hear this? Kartik? I have. I have heard about it, ma'am. I'm yet to read it. I have it oh, in, yeah. in my home. It is a beautiful book. You all should read. Grab it. Um, it's by uh, Potter Galley, the author of um, very beautifully explained that your network is your net worth and how and why. Uh, I won't read everything from this. You can read while I'm talking, but a um, very important thing here is it, that I want to highlight is the last part of it, you know, um, what exactly it means is it's not, so we're all in this whole era of social media. We like to have an account. We like to have followers irrespective of, of what platform we are, but what are we doing out of it? Why are we getting, why are we actually building a network? That is more important. How we can leverage that for some meaningful connections for, for either knowledge sharing, for either, Knowledge, uh, knowledge transformation or exchange or even for making making a career by so uh, he clearly very very clearly explained that the ability to define and stay true true to your passions and value will define the network you have and the net worth you get through it so that is what um i want to start with that trust me it is Whenever we start networking with people, uh, there is a reason. There should be a reason. And the reason should be meaningful for each one of us, right? Especially in the professional setup, personal as well, but yeah, professional setup, it is very, very important to see the relationships that we are building and how we can uh, use those relationships for, for meaningful connections and collaborations to learn or to give it can also be, you know, that you know something and you're sharing it with the other person and how we can make it meaningful with respect to getting a job as well. It helps. Mentorship, many reasons, many such things. But let me tell you another story, okay? My first job, and I was a hard worker, okay? I did put in a lot of efforts and I was working. I had my first discussion with my manager, Every company has an appraisal system, right? Like we have exams in college. Companies have appraisal system. So they see how you are as a worker, what is the rating we give you, like a score you get. And based on that, you get a promotion or a hike or other things that gets discussed. So when I had my first discussion with my manager and he said, I was all up that, yeah, I'm going to get a good rating and he's going to move me up into the next grade. And he told me, why should I do that? And I had a list of things that I, want, I wanted to share with, I shared with him and he said, yeah, I know that. Does anybody else know it? And that's when I understood why branding, why talking, we all think, oh, I shouldn't be talking about myself. My work speaks for it. Why should I do that? But that day I understood. And he told me this, brand yourself or market yourself as if you would do a product and you are an MBA grad especially um, marketing students do that, right? You brand a product, right? So it's individual personal branding is also as important. And that's when he made me understand why you should start branding yourself, your work, connecting with people, letting them know what you're doing, contribute, talk when it is required, share ideas, share knowledge, and let everybody know. Everybody means the world when you're working in 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 office, in your company, or in college, the rest of them. Or now we have social media platforms. So use them wisely to let people know what you stand as a brand. So that was one um, piece of uh, learning for me that why it is important for me to know uh, to start branding myself. Now I'll tell you why, the other side of it. If he would have given me a promotion, there could be a, any other, so there are different, teams, right? Different managers. There, there are leaders in the organization. They come and oppose. Why have you promoted this person? Is there some favoritism you have? Or do you, is there anything else? And they start questioning. But if somebody else out of my team, my own manager knows about my work, 
they won't question. Nobody will question. Even your team member will not question. They know you because you've done good work already. And you and that's when your work speaks, when you start branding yourself. So branding is not required only to get a personal branding is not required only for the first job, but also it will help you be successful, be, be known for what you are in the industry, in your work life, in your personal life, and and um and, and people speak about it. So moving on to why the question, there were uh, there were some questions in the chat. What's the differentiator, right? So branding is required so that you create that differentiator for yourself. It gives you the confidence. It helps you uh, with network building, professional opportunities, and it's your narrative. It cannot be same as somebody who's next to you. Like within in this in this class today we session today we are 70 plus right we're 90 plus now how am i different from my friend though we are all same right from an educational background we are all in doing our graduation from uh the course we are all same but what's my differentiator what's my narrative what what am i for that is personal branding and that will only come with your own story you can only create it, nobody else can. While the resume may look same for everybody, it could be that both of you have, the, uh, two of you or more of, or some of you must, must have done internship in the same company, but experiences, learning, your skill set, your strengths are yours. It cannot be copied. So that is why personal branding is very, very important. Moving on, some of the key elements, right? First, it starts from self-assessment. You should know yourself better. It starts from who am I, what my interests are, how I, uh, what are my strengths, and what are my areas of opportunity. And so this kind of self-assessment, nobody can do for you. <laughs> Even uh, best of the counselors cannot do for you. It comes from you. It comes from within that what I am good at, what I can do, what I have learned is my story. So start crafting that, then create your email, that then create your message. Basically, have an online presence. We all know the professional um, tool is LinkedIn, but you can have in other uh, other platforms as well, which is Insta, your own page, anything. So as long as you have an online presence, it's absolutely fine. No company looks as only this or that, but yeah, have a presence required. Create a resume. I'll come to it how. Cover letter, yes, required. Start networking. When you create an account on LinkedIn, it starts from now. If you have decided that you want to work in a company, that you want to get into a corporate, start looking at companies which align with your interests. And that's why I shared my story that, you know, I was I was big fan of Jack Welch, reading his book, Winning by Gut. And that was my... when. Jack is G Capital International Services was, was setting up their operations in Hyderabad. I was a big fan. Oh, this is the company that I want to get into. And when I got the role, uh, when I started following them, I started seeing what they need and cracked the job. So that is important that you start making the list of companies that interest you, that align with your uh, skill set, with your um, with your ideology with the requirements that they have, start going to the company website, read the culture of the organization, connect with people over there, your seniors, your alum, read the JD. And now comes the JD part. While companies, when they put the JD on online, on, on the tool, they do write a lot of things, but just look at the basics. What basic skills are they looking at? As long as you have it ready, absolutely fine and go ahead and attend the interview. That doesn't mean you can crack it. It's absolutely okay to fail, but that will be a learning. Every interaction that you have will be a learning and you know, okay, next, what I need to do. And meaningful connections we talked about. When you connect with somebody on LinkedIn or any other social media platform, or even personally, it can be offline as, uh, offline as well. See how you can learn. Any, every interaction you have, how you can take away, how you can learn about that person, what that person does. So there are a lot of takeaways you can have with these interactions and connections. Um, key strategy, 
keep it consistent whatever is your thought keep it consistent have that visibility communication skills somebody talked about yes communication skills are important because if i keep quiet for a now or now none of you will be able to understand what i say right i have to speak i have to speak my heart out i have to be genuine and just talking what i know so that is communication skills trust me there's nothing else i did not prepare for this the only thing preparation i did was um structuring my thoughts and sharing my my experiences and that's communication skills as long as you can understand what your what the what the front person is asking or talking about you can comprehend it reply back that is communication skills you don't need so communication skills is not beautiful english we are not authors we are not writing well you can do that but what i'm talking about that in any discussion any conversation or even during the interview as long as you can understand the question reply back and share your story that's enough and that comes with preparation it's absolute and you you can start preparing and can start writing the for each and everything for each and every question by now we all know everything is out the kind of questions they ask and how to prepare so you just need to structure but be genuine because whatever you write in your resume whatever you are preparing they can pose another question following follow up question so be genuine and share what you know and be honest if you don't know you don't know if you know you answer and if you don't know you always say that i can learn it and this is how i can don't say i don't know straight right there was a question on uh asked on um wait i'm forgetting the question it was there in my mind um it was related to interview questions only okay when i get it i'll tell 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 that um continuous improvement why i put that that as one strategy every um person you talk to be open to taking feedback be open to taking failures right with that you learn what did not work out with that you start learning right and then you start preparing uh storytelling very very important bit um that catches people's interest it keeps it alive when i mean storytelling it's not that always for every answer i tell a story but you can always start with um what you know what you bring to the table and how you have acquired that skill the impact the learning that you've had and the impact that it has created so just structure this in the form of a story and then you can answer uh let it not be a straight yes no during the interview process let it not be um i don't know it can be that i've not learned this but i have some of these skills and i have these these are my strengths and i can learn this another question was oh you now i remember the question gaps right yes we all um so i have i worked till 2014 i took a three year career break for family reasons um and then i came back in industry in 2017 i had the reason and i was i'm absolutely okay when anybody asks me why do you have this break i tell them this break is for this reason so state the state honest reason if you have taken a break for preparing for further studies absolutely okay you can always say that you took a break and this is the reason why you took it could be personal reasons it could be for preparing for for for, for um, a right uh, college a right course to get those kind of to clear the entrance it's absolutely okay whatever reason you've taken the break explain that in the same way you don't have to sugar coat you don't have to um go in depth but very strategically high level this is the reason why you took they could ask why again you can always explain that at that point in time this was a re- that was important and that was priority and that was a need so that is the reason i took so having breaks is absolutely okay honest answers i if you don't know something you don't know it's absolutely okay to admit that i don't know but don't try to at the on the spot think and give some or the other answer because you get caught there um 
to answer somebody's question that will MBA job also require learning, uh, trust me, it's a lifelong learning process. We are all learning from each action, from each process, from each individual, from each interaction. We're all learning. So yes, and seek mentors that can help you guide and uh, take this forward. Some of the don'ts I've already told, but yeah, leaving to all of you, do not uh, try to be inauthentic. Uh, do not ignore your online presence. People are watching. The first thing people do is go on LinkedIn and start seeing the kind of comments you post, the kind of um, posts that you're doing, your likes, your dislikes, and things like that. So it's it's a world of social media. We're all uh, we're all present, open. It's an open source for everybody. So be be watchful of how you try what kind of brand you're building for yourself or how you want people to perceive you. So it's very important. Uh, they could be personal accounts. There you can be yourself, but at least professional, which is accessible and it's, it's for the professional setup. Let's try to keep that professionalism intact. Inconsistency, not, not, a, good, uh, not a good sign. Don't try to overly promote yourself. So strike a balance between um, overselling yourself, be genuine in what you've done and what you've acquired and how you've, you will add a value. There will be some feedbacks, admit it, take the feedbacks and don't be impatient. So, okay, let me now bring in some bit of um, how LinkedIn can help. <laughs> some of it here, um, create a profile, a, a nice photograph uh, that you could uh, use. Add everything that you need to. Put your keywords. There's a summary section. Put that. Uh, headlines catch attention. So you can you can see there are catchy headlines that people put. You can start using that. Um, try to start engaging with people on content. If you see there is something interesting, you can like, add comments. Avoid negative comments, <laughs> uh, not a platform because it's social public, right? Uh, we never know how it may harm somebody. So do, do not oppose, uh, do not add a lot of negative content that can be one-to-one -one personally done within. If you have, if you contradict with anything, you can message that person and say, here are my views, but try to be politically correct, important. Uh, there are industry influencers. You can see how they do things and, and uh, it helps. Um, your job search, if you're looking, let your let people know that you're looking. LinkedIn uh, allows you to you know open to work and the kind of work that you're looking for. So you can use that. Um, uh, let me now also achievements. Post, content, learnings, very good. You can start sharing. But again, use your judgment, not too lengthy, not too short. Uh, people start writing now uh, articles uh, on, on certain topics. This the, the LinkedIn article version, you can use that. But on post, you can keep it short and crisp, not too long. Uh, LinkedIn is a very good source to start networking with people. Uh, when you look at when you search for people profile, there should be a reason why you're sending them a request and some connection that you can establish and you can use that connection. It can it can be re a reason for a job search or for, for applying for a job, but let that not be the first reason. Connect, understand, share some of the things, start following that person and then build that connection to, to be able to, to ask that person, can you refer me, right? It doesn't, unless you've established that connection, people may not take take time. Let me be honest in saying, people may not take time in referring, right? One good source, apply directly to that company website. But if you know that person very well, then ask if you can refer my profile perfectly. But 
try to understand but people like sharing their personal stories how what that work means how the how it is helping them what exactly they do what the company is all about any tips that they can share all these are good good to good information to ask and network with people um good to uh, take sorry learning. to interrupt ma'am yeah. but actually we have two questions related to linkedin only so if sure. you don't mind maybe continue may i continue yeah yeah please go ahead you can ask me yeah. so ma'am actually the first question is my question the first question which i would like to ask is see there are in today's time we have so many people have many connections on linkedin someone sends someone a, another person a connection request they accept but there is never an interaction an interaction never takes place so while i'm sending a connection request should i also you know type an introductory message or something like that so that we form a friend, friendly and engaging interaction to start with so that later when i want to utilize that connection you know he would think of me as a friend and not just another person on linkedin so that's my question beautiful thing yes you can uh, a short you know reason for sending that connection and how you what are you looking for from that connection and as you rightly said it's not just that you want to add that person in your network but you are looking at a meaningful connection and a uh, future collaboration or future um, partnership as well friendly and and learning so yes you can you should and uh, like you rightly said i mean we we have even my linkedin profile may have like 20 20000 plus but do i interact with everybody no but do i respond to each and every message that comes yes i do that's where you start losing credibility that if you have built a connection and if you are not interacting then it just become one connection or one follower or one added person in your in your profile but if you there is a reason why you uh, sent a, connect, a friend request or linkedin request then let that reason be stay and start connecting and responding now the other side to it, uh, talking or connecting the other side to it is that like you rightly said i starting that there are a lot of connections that people have established there is a lot there are a lot of people in 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 the list um will they still remember you let me tell you i do remember few of them where there is a constant recall factor or some or the other uh, you know information sharing or things happening yes recruiters or anybody do keep that in mind then comes can we you know get off linkedin and see if you if that person is absolutely okay to share contact numbers you can talk person can be a mentee or a uh, uh, a friend who you can start working and sharing but yeah do take your connections beyond uh, a digital platform but Mom, if it doesn't do happen how do we enhance that yeah. uh, recall value how do we get that recall uh, value against our name because so that they the person recalls us and not think of us as just some other random connection so there are multiple and ways as i said one if they're absolutely okay to connect off linkedin and you share contact details and you start talking seeking advice and you can straight you don't have to again as i said there's no hidden message here you can straight away say that i'm looking at you know certain advices and looking at you as an advice as a mentor as an advisor are you absolutely okay to accept that request and when people accept they will certainly spend time and take that connection off that's one second if it is taking time and you really really um so there are few connections you may not even have conversation but at least you can follow those people and see learn some of the things from what they do what kind of you know um some of the times like i do have few industry leaders who i follow and i see the kind of messages the way the kind of posts they do what they are what are their activities how they are um uh, how they add value and i learn so some pro some connections are where you just follow them and you learn from what they have built for themselves 
some connections are where you have interactions and some may just be there. So how you can have the recall factor is by taking it to the next level of exchanging messages, the, the message feature, can share contacts. Third, follow the person, see the post, put some comments, likes. Don't, don't just hit a like because you want to like, but if it makes sense, hit a like, you can write a um, few lines and that's how you start building, you know, um, the connection. Uh, these are the only ways, there's no other way. But be direct. If there is some ask that you have, be direct. You can ask uh, the reason why you've sent the connection. It's important. And then what you want to take the that forward as well and how you want to take it forward. Understood, ma'am. And thank you so much for answering that question. The next question related to LinkedIn, which we have is, whenever it is from Nitish Shukla, whenever I appear for an interview, can I ask the interviewer to connect on LinkedIn? So, um, again, a little tricky, not uh, when, when a company is on campus and you know who is the interviewer, you, you can go see their profiles. And if you send a request, if they accept, perfect. If they don't, don't be disheartened. <laughs> but there's no right or wrong. You can absolutely go look at the company, the person who's, coming for the interview, the company that is coming, the HR, you can look at their profiles, you can send them a request, this is absolutely okay. Well, let me also explain, there are some people who who are okay with this kind of uh, connection. There could be some people who may not uh, mix that because uh, they still don't know if you will be a potential uh, select or not, and they would want to keep it professional, so they may not accept the request. Till they have made an offer to you and then they may start connecting. So, But it is absolutely okay. I, I wouldn't say it is right or wrong. Um, you shouldn't be thinking so much. If you feel that you've seen that profile, there is some connection you'd like to establish, uh, go ahead and do it. But at least what I know uh, of recruiters are okay. Um, some of the um, hiring managers, which is technical people, would like to still keep that boundary um, and may not accept but but you should be okay too for that as well i hope i've answered your question yes ma'am that was a wonderful answer even i had to know an answer to that question thank you ma'am hey uh we'll move to the next one and you can still continue ats how do i make my resume ATS friendly. Okay. Well, there are a lot of apps that have come up, which will tell you what is your resume score, ATS resume score. Um, I wouldn't say this, which is right, which is wrong. But as a recruiter, I'm sharing the other side of it. All you have to look at is do not make it um, very funky, colorful. <laughs> Let it still be it's a resume. So keep your standard format. Stick to certain fonts. This is very important. Some of the ATS uh, AIs that are built are not, um, do not read all the fonts, right? So we have to be very careful. We don't pay attention to this, but stick to the standard font. Simple formatting, do not add any uh, complex colors, designs. I'm sure every college has, and they have done the due diligence of giving you a format. So stick to it best, you know, keep that. Uh, layout, no too many graphics, not too many tables so that it confuses the ATS tool. Use your keywords so you have to tailor your resume as per the job description. Now, what that means is when you see a company and they share the JD, a job description, um, and if they have asked for four skills and you have all the four skills, highlight that, put it. If you have more, absolutely fine. But what it does not mean that if you don't have, but I'm still putting because I want to fit for the job because you may clear the ATS selection process, but you will not clear the interview. So do not do that. Only if you have it, put that skill and apply. You may have to tweak your resume based on the job description because sometimes um, there, there are certain specifications that they have, which is a requirement and if you have that 
tailor it as per the company. Like for example, if a company is asking for Tableau, put that. If a, another company is asking for, for Python, and if you know that, put that. So it doesn't mean for the first company, I put Python and not put Tableau. Or if I don't know, I put it. That's not the answer. Tailor me, just modify it accordingly where it's a good fit for as per the JT. Also look for the softer aspects. It's not just technical skills. They also mention some soft skills, softer aspects. Pay attention to that because that's the requirement. And you will be interviewed on softer aspects as well. Like for example, they need problem solving skills. So you will see during the interview, they'll throw a problem and they'll ask you to you know, solve it. So very, very important, pay attention to those softer skills as well. Avoid your headers and footer, footers, it confuses. And uh, bullet points, it helps use them for, you know, which is easily readable. Do not put any different kind of bullet points. This is basic while, um, and, and this should be good enough. You don't need to uh, use anything else. Your resume should only talk about the personal front, which is personal details, which is on top. Do not use a lot of space for the personal details. Then comes your objective. It's just two or three lines, not or summary, but not two text, a big text again. Education, important, the college, the course, and your marks. That should be good enough. Then comes your skills important what skills uh, technical skills you have acquired and soft skills that you have acquired functional skills they call it as then comes your project and achievements do not miss on highlighting your achievements as well and it should simply simple be do not write too much text because text is for you to speak versus a resume to write keep it short and crisp the the project that you've worked what was the project what was your what was your role, the impact it created, and how it has value added? So simple text, simple uh, uh, language, and that should be good enough. But highlight some of these things, certifications, achievements. Do mention your achievements as well. That's a good ATS resume. Uh, I picked some of it, like what it what will it help you? As I said, keep it relevant very, very focused for the skills and, and experience you bring, align it for the job that you're applying. Uh, even internship experience is an experience. While that will not give you a job which requires experienced candidate, but it's an experience from a learning perspective. Sometimes we get confused. Oh, I had one year of internship. That should give me a job for a, a position which requires one year of experience. No, one year internship is not equivalent to a one year full-time experience, but one year internship is relevant for you to tell the learnings that you've had on the job, the um, how you know, how you match with the functional or softer skills because you've learned to work in teams, you know how to work on projects, you know how to meet deadlines, you know how to talk to a customer because these are some of the experiences you've acquired while during your internship. You know exactly how to solve a problem. You know how exactly to, to come up with the project, project plan, deliverables and things like that. I'm giving an example, right? And the technology or technical or the work that you have done during internship. So please highlight that key, very important. Highlight all your academic projects. We don't, we feel that only industry experience or project is important, but no, even academics projects is important because that shows the skill and practical knowledge. Use action verbs. We miss out on the skin, uh, this important thing, but it's very, very important that you start with the impact that you have created. It should show what you have done, what you have created, developed, designed, led. So these are good, strong words, which shows the skill that you bring, that you're not just a team member, but you've done meaningful work. Strong objective and relevant skills. So with that, I take a pause. I'm done with the deck that I have and I'll stop sharing my screen and go to relevant questions. 
I hope, um, I know we've overshot our time, but um, I hope some of it made sense. I'm open to questions if I've miss out, missed out on any important things uh, apart from the deck that I have shared. But uh, wrapping it up with saying, uh, do not complicate your complex your minds so much. Keep it simple. Go through the journey. It is important. And every individual's journey is different. So go through it. Don't be in a rush that I need to know everything. You cannot. Even if you are 100% ready, the minute you join a company, the technology may change. The requirement may change. They may put you into another role and expect you to learn something new. So uh, to all my friends over here and future colleagues, young graduates here, um, please do not complex it so much for yourself. Uh, emphasize on the power of learning. Emphasize on basics. Uh, emphasize on, on how I can talk to anybody who I sit in front of me with confidence. That's all you have to learn or prepare yourself on. The rest, you will figure it out. And questions on where I can get internships, where I can get uh, uh, job opportunities. There are number of job sites, number of uh, um, job sites which open internship roles, FT uh, full-time positions. Absolutely okay to apply, but be a word of caution. Do not apply to any position where they are asking money from you to give you a job. There's a scam as well. So please be watchful of which website you're taking this internship remote or off. Uh, so one of your friend asked whether online experience is okay or offline. Uh, I, I would say that if that's the option right now, go ahead. But uh, the offline um, experiences are completely different. When... Uh, you meet each other when you spend time with each other physically. Um, there's a connection that established versus online. Well, I'm uh, we have we have adapted to the online way of working, but if there's a balance, it's absolutely okay. But if it's completely online, no harm as long as you're able to connect. So in an online mode, all you have to remember is don't go off completely. Find a mode to connect with each other whoever you're working with, give a status update, fix up a meeting and ensure that there is some bit of communication that is happening, not that you take the requirement, start working and don't connect. So a um, little bit, you have to change the way of working. You have to ensure that you're meeting your supervisor, your guide or your mentor frequently. Uh, open a chat where you can interact, talk, clear your doubts, Communicate. So communication flow should be there. If it's completely online, ensure that it's, you have to do more versus offline. You have to do more communication and connect it. But um, I wouldn't say this is bad or that is bad. Uh, offline is always preferred uh, because it's different, but online is absolutely okay. As long as you're able to talk to each other, communicate, share updates, share progress, um, let them know what the challenges are and, and there's learning happening. Okay. Ma'am, I know we have exceeded the duration, stipulated duration for this meeting, but we have one last question, if you can allow this one question. Sure. Uh, thank you so much, ma'am. So this question is from Rishi Sharma. He's asking, we have seen a big upset in the IT field in the past couple of years, and many big campuses couldn't provide better placements and the people who didn't get the joining letter. There were many who didn't get, who were offered a job, but didn't get the joining letter. So even those who have done masters from abroad and other places are not getting jobs and removing the masters from their resumes. So what is it? What is this gap that is being eclipsed? This is the question which is being asked by Rishi Sharma. So sure. please answer this, ma'am. And I did also see uh, that a uh, couple of you have said that uh, they got, they dropped off due to some difficulties and then chose a different career. See, uh, 
to all of you, I, I did start with the story saying that I was doing something, I was good at something, but I did not crack, then did something else and things like that. And every individual will have some or the other story like that. Not every time it's a clear, straight path that, okay, if I take science, I only do this and do that. We have seen wonderful uh, people from non-conventional backgrounds cracking roles and, and things like that. So one, one thing, do not remove anything from your resume. It's your it's your hard work. You've spent that time. Keep it. Keep it for a reason. Keep it. Um, you don't have to hide. Because if you hide, there will be a question, what did you do? Right? So be open about it. I did this. And it's absolutely okay to admit that I tried this and I was not good at it. And I find my skills, my strengths in this area. Interest can change. Right? Your interest can change. You and it's absolutely okay to say that um, my interest changed or I was not good at it and I, I am good at this. Or the, the there is a transformation, the requirement in the industry has changed. So I want to be, um, you know, uh, updated upgrade, uh, and aligned with what the new technology is. And that's why I changed. So it's, these are absolutely acceptable answers. So do not hide anything that you've done. Please keep it in your resume. and have reasons to why it is there and why you've done and what you br what you bring to the table. Now, this whole gap about industry, I will admit the fact that, yes, there is a slowdown. I There's no uh, hidden fact about it. Yes, it has been. It has been there for two years, uh, continuing a bit this year as well. But we are seeing positive signs um, of uh, of things going smooth. But let me tell you, what we do is we only think that the world is IT. Okay. As engineers, as, as uh, college graduates, you should think beyond IT. There are a lot of industry which requires young minds like you. If there has been a slowdown, there are other avenues that you should start thinking at. And it may take time. I'm not saying that for some of you, it may have been a few months. For some of you, it may have been years. Um, but we got to accept that that's the situation and see what's the alternative. How I can still accept any change that happens. See, we all transformed when pandemic happened. We adapted. We quickly moved. And then we were all fine. After three months of, uh, of COVID, everything was fine. While I know there was still a scare of... Uh, and of the situation, but we all adjusted to adapt to it. And any such thing that happened, let now let's talk about the job market. If it has happened, it has happened only the IT industry. If you look at the rest of the companies are still hiring, consulting is hiring, other industry is hiring, healthcare, pharmaceutical, healthcare and life sciences, hospitality, entertainment, media, FMCG, industry is still hiring, right? It's only IT where there's a slowdown. Only IT companies have stopped coming. Uh, do you agree or no? I'm sure you all know. It's only this industry because, and that is because of um, when there's a slowdown, uh, when there's a rapid growth, companies invest in, uh, in growing, in people, in adapting to new ways of doing, technology, transformation, all that happens. But when there's a slowdown, all of this gets stopped, right? And because of that, the, the new opportunities that could have been created in this, in, this, um, in this industry has been a slowdown. So yes, it is a slowdown. Now, couple of things. Beautiful time for you to spend time with family. Why not? Beautiful time for you to take something new, learn. And... Pick something on your own. Look at things around yourself. Look at society. Look at community. Look at yourself. Look at things around you. Problems that are existing. Can I pick that as a use case and use my mind to come up with some innovative solution? Can I start looking at starting on my own? Why not? Can I start? Investment may not be there, but at least there is a use case, right? For things to... So that, what I'm just trying to say is uh, it's easy for me to explain, uh, share I know it is difficult for somebody who's in that situation, but the only way it will be is that 
adapt, accept, wait, and then move on. Um, it was not only for freshers, it's for experienced professionals like us as well. Another story may bore you. I had the same situation. My I, I had my husband, um, he's in the IT field at a very senior position. The complete team was laid off. We heard about layoffs, right? My role got transformed. And I have I was at, at a risk what I'm going to do. And I started looking at new ways, new things that I can add to my skill so that I still show that I, I, I'm required in the organization. So even after 20 years of experience, we were facing this whole you know, fear of losing job and how we are going to run the finances, two growing up kids. Uh, six, three months, four months, my husband was without a job and he was looking at other things. So, but he found a job now. So it's all about hold, wait, accept, things will move on. Just have that dedication, be confident, don't lose your hopes and continue investing that gap that you have in something meaningful. Look at alternate career paths. Now, let me tell you another story. Uh, I was always passionate about teaching and I've always been into that and never got a chance. The whole uh, uncertainty in the job market and corporate made me feel this is a good time. Why don't I enroll into a doctoral degree and move into academics because that field is never going to die. So I'm creating an alternative career path for me that if anything happens here, at least I have a second option. Maybe a personal story, but I thought it's relevant that start looking at alternatives, right? And keep yourself ready so that anything happens. So there should be always be plan B. <laughs> if plan A doesn't work, plan B will. Okay, uh, any other questions? I'll be happy. Well, ma'am, unfortunately, due to time constraint, we sure. will not be able to have more questions. But that was a wonderful session. On behalf of the entire Student Placement Council, I would like to extend our heartfelt thanks to you, Ritu, ma'am, for this highly informative session. I think a lot of our students will benefit from the knowledge that you shared with us. Also, when you, a person who is from an HR background, Reassure the students that AI won't take away their jobs. Trust me, it really means a lot. Even I was scared. We get a lot of questions on this topic and I'm glad that you cleared this doubt from the minds of our students. Also, the anecdote which you shared with us on the topic about why marketing our own self is important and is very useful. That, that idea and that anecdote I found very useful and practical. It personally helped me a lot because I myself believe, or at least used to believe, that my work will speak for itself. Why do I need to show it to everyone else? Now I have understood from your anecdote that we need to make the world aware of our contributions. Not to show off, but to make them aware that we did this. One more thing which I didn't know was that the ATA system doesn't understand all the fonts and styles. So that was another takeaway from this session. Overall, I hope we all gained a lot of knowledge from this session. And I'm sure all our students really appreciate that. Thank you once again, ma'am, for guiding us. With this, I would like to conclude today's session. Uh, today's session. We really appreciate all the students who joined the session. Uh, good night, ma'am. Good night to everyone else. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you all for patiently listening. Thank you, uh, team Thank and you, team address, uh, to have me here. Uh, wishing you all good luck uh, and good night. One last thing, Sundresh. Uh, if I've yes, missed any questions, if you could put them on uh, over an email and send it to me. I'll sure. be happy to address them. But I don't want to leave uh, any question unanswered. I do see some of them are still there. Please yes, feel free to open a form, ask the questions. I'll be happy yes, to uh, reply them over an email. Sure, ma'am. That is, that is so kind of you. And that, is, that means a lot to us as students because even I am a third year undergraduate student and my placement season started three days ago. And this is the this is exactly the session that I was looking forward to. And I'm sure many people have loads of questions. And it was a wonderful session where you actually answered literally all of them. Ma yes, ma'am. So thank you for the session, ma'am. Thank you all. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, we have compiled all the questions into a document and we will send it to you. Great. Thank you wonderful. so much for I'll taking the time to answer all the questions. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, ma'am. Good night, ma'am.
uh, sir we can end the session sir and we can also end the live stream